Hi everyone! Today we're going to create the cat and mouse game. It is a very basic game in which we control the mouse and the cat is chasing us and we have to escape and survive for some time. This game is very easy to code but at the end I will give you some ideas to make your game better. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's delete the cat and add another cat, a top view of a cat, this one, and a mouse, this one. As they are too big for this screen, it is very difficult to escape from this cat. I'm gonna make both smaller. I'm gonna reduce their sizes to 50. All right, that's more reasonable. So let's begin with the mouse. We're going to go to events and when green flag clicked forever, the mouse is going to go to mouse pointer. So now when click on the green flag, you see the mouse comes to the mouse pointer, but as you see, it is pointing the same direction all the time. So to fix that, before going to mouse pointer, we're, not, we're gonna make it point towards mouse pointer. So now as we move, you will see the mouse comes towards us. So with this, with these blocks, the mouse is made for a moment. We have to add several things. Let's go to the cat. Here in the cat, same event, when green flag clicked forever, the cat is going to point towards the mouse, point towards mouse one, and move. And this number will determine the speed of your cat. Seven could be reasonable, but this is something you have to try in your games, and if you think this is too fast or too slow, you change that number. Okay, let's try how it works. All right, that's good. The cat is chasing me and I can control the mouse. If I stop, well, it goes crazy. All right, so um, something to, to keep in mind. When I click on green flag, the mouse instantly appears here. If the cat starts here, the cat is gonna eat us as soon as we start the game. So we have to make the cat start from the other corner. As you see, when I place the cat here, it tells me that the current position of the cat is X197, Y negative 100, 37. So at the beginning of the game, before the this loop, the forever loop starts, we're gonna make the cat go to this position. And no matter where the cat ends the game, the next game, the cat is gonna start from the corner and we'll have time to react. That's the point of, of doing this. Okay, so we have to add an end to the game, an end when we lose, in an end when we win. Winning could mean surviving for a while. We will say later how long we have to survive. So let's go to the mouse and we need two conditions. What happens if I lose and what happens if I win? When do I lose? That's the question. Okay, I lose when my mouse is touching the cat. So let's go to Samson and we say if Look, I'm programming the mouse, I'm coding the mouse. If touching cat, we have lost. One thing we can do, which is very simple, it's in control, we can stop all. Let's check it. When I touch the cat, everything stops. But apart from stopping, maybe we can, we wanna create the effect of the cat eating the mouse. So very easily we can hide the mouse. So let's go to looks, and before stopping all, we're going to hide the mouse. Let's see. Okay, it works, but we have forgotten one thing. What? Imagine we want to play that game again. I click on green flag, and the mouse doesn't show. It doesn't show because I haven't told the mouse to show at the beginning of my game. So let's pick this block, and let's drag it here. And now, green flag. The mouse appears, it is eaten by the cat, I click on green flag, and you can see the mouse again. 
Okay, um, so this is good, this is quite reasonable. We can do one more thing, we can switch the backdrop, we can add a backdrop in which uh, we write a game over message, for example. I'm gonna do it. We go here to state, to backdrops, here, backdrops, and the only backdrop that I have for the moment is this white one. I'm gonna include another one for the game, for example, could be this, the desert, if you want. Now I can get rid of this one. And now I'm going to, I'm gonna paint another backdrop. Look, let's zoom out. Let's pick this rectangle with a black feel. I place the rectangle here. And on this, I'm gonna write a message. Could be red, light red. Game over. Selection tool, let's make it larger and let's center it and let's change its name, game over. And now let's go to code and to the mouse. We said if touching cut 2, we want to hide the mouse and switch backdrop to game over. Let's try and what's wrong? The same thing at the beginning of the game. I have to switch backdrop to another one. So here I have to switch backdrop to the desert. So I will start with the desert at the beginning of my game and here we will switch backdrop to, to game over. Let's see, perfect. When I'm eaten by the cat, we switch backdrop to game over. When I click on green flag, I start here again. So the game over thing is finished. Now let's go to the winning part. What happens when I win? Well, I want to win when I have survived for 30 seconds, for example. If I go to sensing, here we have a timer. As you see, the timer uh, is restarted automatically when I press on green flag. Look, you see? It always happens in this version of Scratch, but if it doesn't, you have this block reset timer, which is something something you should place at the beginning. All right. So doing this, you make sure the timer is reset at the beginning of your game. And how how do we call this? All right. Let's go to operators. Let, let's take a greater than block. In sensing, we bring the timer here. And here we set the number that we want. This is measured in seconds. Keep in mind that you have to try if your game is working or not. So you're not going to be playing for 30 seconds to check if the blocks that we have placed here are actually working. So I recommend that here, when you are coding your game, you set a very small number, like number 5 for example, so that you only have to play for 5 seconds to check if everything is working, and once you make sure everything's all right, you change that number. Let's try a stop all block, as we've done before. So green flag, the timer is reset, and when it touches me, sorry, I have to survive. I'm not gonna let it catch me. Okay, as you, th as you see the timer doesn't stop, it never stops. You can even hide it and the timer will continue working, but the game has stopped. As I said, you can hide the timer. I'm checking this, but the timer is const constantly working, okay? What else can we do apart from stopping all? Well, we can change, switch the backdrop. So I'm gonna go to backdrops, another backdrop, and well, I could duplicate this and change the text and maybe the color, but I'm going to paint. This time in the rectangle, the fill is gonna be made up of several colors. Let's pick this green and white. Okay, that looks beautiful. Now some text saying victory. Let's change the title of the backdrop. 
victory, let's make it bigger. I'm gonna take this tool to change the font. Marker looks beautiful. Let's place it in the center. And now we go to the mouse and we code it again before we stop all after timer is greater than five. Switch back up to victory and we already have this. Switch back up to desert at the beginning. So let's try the game again. We start in desert. And after five seconds, we switch to victory and the game stops, except the timer, you know. Okay, uh, that's great. Another idea that I'm gonna give you in case you wanna put it into practice, I'm not going to, but I'm gonna give you the idea. Here in the mouse, we have two costumes, one and two. And if you accidentally delete this costume, you can well, duplicate this or you can uh, find the costume here. The idea is that you duplicate, you call them mouse two and mouse one, for example. And in mouse two, you can draw a crown. If you draw a crown here in the code, when we have one, apart from switch it, switching back up to victory, we can switch costume to mouse two. And again, at the beginning of the game, we switch costume to mouse one to start with the normal costume. That's one idea. You can also have uh, three costumes in the mouse and you can create another costume uh, of a dead mouse. A dead mouse is easy to, to make because you can separate the parts of the body of the mouse. Which is not obligatory, but uh, could be a good idea. And in that case, here, uh, you shouldn't hide the mouse because if you hide the mouse, you're not gonna see the next costume. But instead of hiding the mouse, you could switch costume to mouse two or three, well, the one that is the dead mouse. And as I said at the beginning, switch costume to, to the initial mouse. That's an idea that you can put into practice, but well, that's up to you. And well, an extra idea that I wanted to give you uh, is change the speed of the cat as time passes. So uh, the more time we have survived, the longer we have survived, the faster the cat is. How do we do that? Well, here we cannot have a, a fixed number. We must have a variable. So let's go to variables and I'm gonna make a variable called speed. I'm gonna drag speed in here and now this is going to move speed steps. And what is speed? Because as you see uh, here, as default, it is zero. But it's not gonna be zero because I'm gonna create a parallel program here, which will say that when green flag clicked, so at the beginning of my game, I'm going to set speed to five. So according to my program, and uh, the cat is going to move five steps because speed equals five. But I'm going to add a forever here, a wait two seconds and a change speed by one. What does it mean? It means that every two seconds, we're gonna change speed by one. Then we will wait two seconds and we will change speed by one. So speed is gonna be increasing again and again. Let's look. Uh, I'm gonna change this because I need to play for more than uh, five seconds so that you see the change of speed. When I click on green flag, you will see speed uh, is set to five, but every two seconds, speed increases. Now speed is six, now speed is seven, eight, nine, 10, and you see the cat is moving faster and faster. Okay, that's good. So, well, with this, the game could be finished. If you want an extra idea that I, I told my students, uh, instead of putting here speed, you could put timer. And that makes that in the second number one of my game, the speed is gonna be one. But in second number 20, for example, speed is gonna be 20 and so on. So every second speed increases one, okay? But well, that's an idea that you can try by yourselves. I'm gonna leave this here. And this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you liked it, guys. I know this is for beginners, but I wanted to bring this game to the channel. So as usual, feel free to try creating the game, ask me any questions and whatever you want. 
and I will see you next time. Bye bye!